Hey everybody, it's uh, Mike with the 1974 GMC Motorhome. Uh, I know it's been hard to hear me on these last few when I was my head was up underneath the up underneath the the unit and trying to to get stuff out. And so today I decided I'm going to just do some work and then kind of show you what was done. So just as a little side note is is that the you know the the engine's out on the stand. We'll get ready to tear that apart and figure out what it needs. You know, there's the there's the axle shaft from the passenger side. But if you look around the barn, there are parts of this motor home everywhere. And uh, one thing you got to take into consideration when you're doing a project like this, if you're going to strip it this far down, you know, it's going to take up, uh, you know, more than twice the room there's the windshields from yesterday you know there's the headliner over there the generator in the back i mean it's it's just uh it's kind of consumed the barn and i do try to keep this main bay clear in case i have to do any work on my own cars or a lot of time friends come over and and need some help but i mean you just look around there's just there's parts everywhere there's the rear hatch down there next to the ls engine that's planned for the Chevelle. Now there's parts here in the back. I actually have a sea container down below that my wife keeps her horse hay in and uh, it's it's got some parts in it. It's mostly stuff I don't think I'm going to use. There's the couch, there's the fridge, you know it's just everything everywhere. So today I pulled out the front differential which meant I took the other the other half shaft off kind of just like yesterday. Um, Here's the, here's the differential hanging. I took it right out the top, just like uh, I did the motor. I basically got the, you have to take the cover off first and drained it. And then uh, I put a chain on it. I took a couple of bolts out on this side. These two, that one gets the uh, dipstick tube out. And that one just because I was putting a chain through this hole. And then this is just an old seatbelt bracket or something out of a car I had that I bolted on there. Then I've got the chain, and so I basically supported it in the vehicle. Just a very little bit of tension, not a lot. And then I took the rest of the bolts out, all except for this top one, um, because it was kind of hanging down a little bit. I didn't have all the weight lifted off of it. And so then I took that top one out, and it just, uh, just slides forward a little bit. You can see the splines on the pinion. And it uh, slid out, came right out. Raised it up, reached in and picked it up. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put it right now. So if we walk around here, so you kind of have a view. Back here in the front, you can see the trans in there. You can see where that differential bolted. I'll see if I can get a little bit closer, but you can see the two half shafts hanging there. There's that. The, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, take that uh, torque converter out and cap it. So I keep it clean and then I'll get a chain on this so that I think I where I think I can pick it level you know probably from that top uh, top bolt there you know over to maybe one of the bolts that uh, that the differential was hooked to so that I can get a nice nice uh, level pick on it they're, they're typically not that heavy you know it's maybe 300 pounds something like that so so not going to be terribly difficult and we'll get that out of there and then we'll kind of get this all this goop and guck cleaned up and maybe use some some routing clips for wires and a speedometer cable and you know there's the fuel a fuel filter and the fuel line and power steering pump still in sitting there you know there's the intermediate shaft laying there and some other parts here's the dipstick tube sticking out I haven't pulled it out just yet so but we'll walk up inside boy this step seems to get higher and higher every day try not to bang my head again there's all the bolts I was setting down as I as I did it Let's see here if I can get you a good kind of a good view you can see the drop my phone in that oil but there's the speedometer gear and inside that spline is where the spline from the differential mates up so just kind of showing you that probably the next uh, try and pause this video here in a minute and uh, then it'll be 
then I'll damn it, I just hit my head again. Um, then I'll show you with the transmission hanging from the from the rail in there. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate all your comments, and hopefully this video is a little better. Nice, it should be a nice short one. Thanks. Bye. All right, everybody, we're back. The tranny is out. It gave me some fits to lift it out through the top. You can see the torque converter is off. Get you in there, see the pump and the seal. Like I said, I, I think the same thing on this. I'm going to replace all the gaskets and seals and clean it up. And uh, But I don't think I'm going to tear it apart. It ran too good, shifted fine. Not a lot of debris in the pan when I took it off the last time. I'll look again this time. I want this rear cover to come off and seal that up real good. Make sure that's not going to leak. I'll have to take the pan off again and get another pan gasket. So the big trouble was getting it out was balance point. So what, this is where I ended up connecting. So I had to take the bolt out of the rear mounting bracket, turn it around. And then I had a bolt through here, and it balanced pretty good there. So that's uh, what we did. Um, I walk over here again, Chris. Quick, you can see the see the differential, and there's the torque uh, converter. And I just taped that off to keep any debris or anything out of it. But everything looks pretty good. If it didn't leak, it probably didn't need to come out. So everybody have a great day. Like and subscribe. Bye.